Hello folks and welcome back to another action movie recommendation. Before I start, I'd like to say sorry for taking so long to make another video, but a little over a month ago my computer had a meltdown and basically what happened was my hard drive crashed and it became a lengthy process of repairs and data recovery because although most of my data was recovered, there were still a few things I needed to get back and that took some time. And of course, work for me in general has been particularly busy. And I've also set up a new channel on here, it's called Mind Meld Entertainment. However, it's still in the development process, so there's nothing on it at the moment. But once it becomes active, I'll post a video to let you all know. But anyways, for this movie recommendation, we'll be looking into the legendary all-American badass that is Kurt Russell. Now, believe it or not, Kurt Russell actually started his career as a Disney child star in the 1960s. However, once his contract with Disney ended, Russell decided to completely reinvent himself. He started a few mixed genre films to start with, but it wasn't until 1981 where he hit it big with the fantasy action thriller John Carpenter's Escape from New York. And after the success of Escape from New York, Kurt Russell followed this success with a string of classic movies from action to horror, from thriller to science fiction, and even some comedy. Kurt Russell is definitely an action star and has the right look for it, but he's also truly a great actor in his own right and has plenty of crossover appeal. And he continues to impress. After a long hiatus, he has returned to our screens in Fast and the Furious 7 and Quentin Tarantino's Hateful Eight and he is currently slated to appear in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. But for a lot of people, Kurt Russell will always be remembered as Snake Plissken, and it's only fitting that we look at this film and find out what made it so memorable. In the future, New York City has been turned into a maximum security prison, and the US president has been dropped into it after his jet was hijacked by terrorists. This incident has left the New York police with no choice but to send in a top operative to go in and rescue the president. Kurt Russell is Snake Plissken, a war hero turned criminal and is serving a life sentence in jail for robbing a federal reserve. However, the New York police have selected him as the operative to rescue the president, and in return, Snake will receive freedom. But the clock is ticking, as the police have placed microscopic explosives in Snake's neck to make sure he doesn't abandon his mission. This leaves Snake with 24 hours to rescue the president or go bang. Escape from New York is a comic book style movie. Everything from the visual design to the characters are all fantastical and out there. And that is exactly what makes this movie so much fun to watch. Kurt Russell is perfectly cast as Snake Plissken. He has a cool voice, a classic look, and his I don't give a shit attitude is always fun to watch. Now you might think Snake would be unlikable at first because of this particular attitude. However though, he's never entirely selfish. He does show signs of care and concern every now and then, and he never kills anyone who isn't a threat. And of course, let's not forget, Hideo Kojima ripped off this character, so all you Metal Gear fanboys out there who think that Solid Snake is an original character, think again. Lee Van Cleef plays Police Commissioner Hauk, and he's pretty much leading the operation for the President's rescue. Kinda like Big Boss in Metal Gear, with Big Boss giving Snake his commands. Van Cleef is always great to see. He has a coolness to him, as well as a slimy quality that not a lot of actors possess. Ernst Borgnine plays Cabby, a New York cab driver who befriends Snake, and he's very likeable. Borgnine is always a joy to see. Hell, he didn't win an Oscar for nothing. Donald Pleasance plays the President of the United States and provides a great performance as always, but I must admit he doesn't have much to him aside from just being there to be rescued. Harry Dean Stanton plays Brain, a former friend of Snake, and he winds up helping him on his mission. Stanton is one of those great character actors that shows up in a wide variety of films, and he always delivers an engaging and likeable performance. He's almost 90 years old now and he still shows up from time to time. Adrienne Barbeau plays Maggie, Brain's girlfriend, and she's also great in this film. She's tough and no-nonsense. And finally, we have Isaac Hayes as the Duke of New York, our central villain. Hayes looks like as if he's having fun doing this movie. His character is clearly in charge of all the gangs in New York, and everything from his clothing, his car, and attitude reflect this perfectly. 
The visual look of this movie is excellent. New York really looks gloomy and dangerous, and the musical score by John Carpenter fits perfectly. Like all of John Carpenter's music, it's composed on synthesizer and has a dark and haunting atmosphere. I can't imagine a better score to fit this movie. The cinematography is very traditional. Carpenter is well known for making the best use of wide angle shots, so you can get a good view of what's going on. It may be called very old fashioned by today's generation of filmmakers, but you know something? There's nothing wrong with that because sometimes you don't need hyperactive editing and constant shaky cam. This is a movie for God's sake, not a documentary or home movie. I mean, what, is it too much work to place a camera on a tripod these days? It seems like lazy filmmaking to me. The action in the movie is very minimal. It's not really about how much stuff you can blow up, it's more about suspense. But there is a decent amount of gun shooting, fist fights, a couple of car chases, and a cool gladiatorial fight also. The movie was a critical and financial success. It was made on a $6 million budget and grossed $25 million worldwide. And rightfully so, Escape from New York is a solid action thriller with an immersive world and colourful characters. It's easy to see why people liked it. Overall, I give Escape from New York the perfect score. 5 out of 5. Oh, and I also have to mention the sequel, Escape from LA, which came out 15 years later in 1996. Talk about overdue, but then again we've had a few overdue sequels in recent years too. However, in 1996 the world was a very different place, and people were probably not very excited to see this film, because the mystique of Snake had worn off after such a long time, and many action films that came up after Escape from New York more or less follow the character blueprint of Snake Plissken. Kurt Russell returns as Snake, and John Carpenter returns to direct. And the end result was a decent movie, but hardly original. However, I do feel this movie is somewhat underrated. I enjoy it for the action and Kurt Russell. But I have to confess, it's not as good as the first film. Escape from LA is essentially a clone of the first movie. It has a very similar plot involving Snake being set up for another mission. This time to rescue the president's daughter. But this time he has to go into LA, which has also become a maximum security prison. While this film is entertaining and Kurt Russell still has it as Snake, it's nothing that will blow your mind. The supporting cast is fine, the action is okay, the music is good, however the biggest sins in this movie is a total recycling of the first movie's plot, and of course, the use of CGI. And during the mid to late 90s, CGI was still in its infancy, and there is a lot of bad CG here. The cityscapes in particular look awful, but there's one infamous scene involving Snake on a surfboard where he's riding a CGI wave. Oh boy, does that look bad or what? But once you get past those two things, it's still a fun movie, and there's some fun cameos from Steve Buscemi and Bruce Campbell. However, the movie was not a financial success. It cost $50 million and grossed only half its budget back, and critical reception was mixed to negative. However, Roger Ebert gave it 3.5 out of 4. But if I were to rate it, I'd give it 3 out of 5 overall. Now, there were plans for a third film called Escape from Earth, which would have Snake, well, escaping from Earth. But it never happened, which is a shame because that sounded like a fun concept. But history is history and it just never happened. Well, that's my review of Escape from New York and Escape from LA. I hope you all liked it and stay tuned for more, folks. See you soon.